This is Old Town in Basel, Switzerland. Now those hills right back there, that's Germany. 10 kilometers that way is France. And it's this strategic location that has made Basel home to one of the most anticipated exhibitions in all of Europe, namely Basel World. And that's why I'm here, to discover the art of time. Basel is Switzerland's cultural city, filled with countless museums and art installations. It's no wonder that fine art and luxury timekeeping go hand in hand here. Both demand creativity, passion, and innovation. While I've previously experienced timekeeping, I'd need to pick up a thing or two on the art. So tell me a little bit about the history of the museum. Well, the, the museum was, was founded by Hans Bader, who was a very famous gallerist. And he was sort of keeping uh, the paints he didn't want to sell apart and sort of formed his own collection. And eventually he decided to build his own museum. And so how has Basel become such a hotbed for uh, modern and, and contemporary art, really? Yeah. Uh, that has something to do with, with Ernst Bader, who, um, who always uh, thought that it's actually better, better to, to, to stay in, at one place and let the people, let the collectors come to, to you. And it's a, it's a very sort of um, practical place in terms of, you know, France is very close. We can, from the region, we can actually look to Germany. So, so you are at the border of, of three countries. And the, the story of uh, contemporary art in Basel is, is connected with a um, famous art fair, which mm. takes place in June every year, and which is, again, a, an enormous success. So when you're talking about the art fair, is it Art Basel? Art Basel, yeah. And then, of course, there's Basel World, which is for, for watches yeah. and things like yeah. that. I mean, really appreciating art is, is a real luxury. And mm -hmm. same with um, luxury watches. How, how come all this luxury things have become so like ingrained in Swiss sort of culture? Is it, is it part of the Swiss culture or what is it just part of the history? Or? Is it has something to do with the general openness of this place and as I said before, the closeness to, to other countries. And, um, and Switzerland is a very wealthy country, one has to say this. Mm -hmm. And there, there live many, many uh, wealthy collectors who are interested in these, in these kind of luxury things. And, um, art is the unique thing because it's the ultimate uh, original uh, luxury good, if you, if you like. All right, so tell me a little bit about the uh this is art that we're standing on. Uh, definitely. This is art. So tell, tell me a bit about this. Um, well, it's, it's art which is a machine, which is a sculpture. It's, uh, it's made by an artist, Jean Tangley, who was, um, he started his career in the 1950s in Paris, who, who always try, uh, worked with, with machines, with, with mechanical um, means. His works, his sculptures move. It's really interesting, because in many ways his art it is sort of uh, the answer to Swiss watchmaking, which is the efficient, the uh, you know all that all that work you put in this one little piece, like the intricacies yeah. of that is like this is he's blowing this up and just just yeah. speaking out against it. It's it's in a certain way it's a, it's an antithesis to to Swiss watchmaking, but on the other way it's um, it's about uh, invention, it's about uh, fantasy, it's about. Um, uh, testing out poss po possibilities, and, and if you imagine that such uh, such a thing like like the big utopia which we are which we are standing on was uh, was made to be transported from Switzerland to Venice, there you see uh, Tangley tested out the possibilities of his machinery, and maybe that's something where he he is linked with with uh, watchmaking, where they always test also the possibilities of, of, of mechanics, how small you can get, and he tested out, obviously, how big. <laughs> how big and what kind of contraption you can make. Well, this is awesome.
It is the crossroads of culture and countries that have led to a thriving freedom of expression and innovation here. With better insight on the art and creativity behind the machine, I'm now ready to return to Basel World. Baselworld plays host to endless watch and jewelry brands every year, showcasing their latest temptations and creations. And the art of timekeeping? The timepieces here are a labor of love, where innovative precision meets artisanal prestige. This is Baselworld 2015. With 141,000 square meters of exhibition space and over 1,500 international brands represented here, this is a huge undertaking. And though the watch industry might be male-dominated, it only takes one woman to run all of this. Um, I just want to know, give me, give me a brief history of, of Basel World and how it's become the biggest watch event of the year. Basel World has a long history here in Basel. Uh, 80 years ago, it was a section part of a public show called MUBA, and the Swiss watch industry was, was a part of this MUBA. And 1973 became uh, the European watch and jewelry show. And uh, the brands here, the Swiss watch industry especially, is presenting all the new trends, all the new models they uh, are gaining more and more importance all around the world and uh, Baselworld could grow with them. Well, what is the importance of Baselworld for, for the watch industry? So it's by far the, the most important event all over the year. Uh, many of them are doing 90% uh, of the yearly turnover here in our halls and uh, another important point is uh, the media impact generated by Baselworld. So the, the whole industry is present at Baselworld and we have more than 4,000 people from the press coming here and spreading around the, the news. And news is exactly what I'm here for. To get the scoop before the action, I meet with some watch experts to talk about this year's trend. So how many times have you been to Baselworld now? This is probably my, my seventh year. Right? Seventh year? So what keeps you, like, how do you keep it exciting? Because this is my second year, and I feel like deja vu. No, I don't. I feel like it's all new and exciting. No, but this is my second year, and you know, I can see it's, it's still, it's not as exciting as the first year, because the first year I came here, I was like, oh, wow, it's all this glitch. Like, how, is it, how, what makes it exciting for you, you know, to come back? For me, I mean, I, I love the product. I mean, I'm a watch nerd through and through, you know, self-admitted. I, I totally kind of vibe with that, but the thing is, each watch every single year can be totally new. You know, Patek is doing a brand new split second this year that they've never done before with an enamel dial. It's absolutely stunning. And so you just have to kind of like, you know, kind of pick a microcosm and say, okay, Patek, okay, they're not changing the world. They're not doing an Apple watch or anything like that, but they're going to innovate in their own little way and kind of get involved with each brand in their own story. Uh, so if you can do that, you can really get yourself worked up about, okay, the new Omega is, is great because of this, or the new Tag Heuer is great because of that. Um, but you're right. I mean, you know, the, the longer you, you start, you know, to, the longer you come to a show like this, the more kind of comfortable you get. It can be fun as you start to get accustomed to it because you know where the great beer spots are, you know where the pretty girls are, you know where all the fun stuff is. Um, but you know, this is this is a trade show. At the end of the day, people are here to work. This is where the years worth of business is being done for, for the majority of the industry. Um, you know, so I'm here as, you know, certainly as a professional journalist, but also also as a, a watch lover. And you have to remember that so much of the, of the remainder of this year, it, you know, rides on this. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of here for fun, for sure, but I think other people here take this much more seriously than you or I. I think, you know? <laughs> what do you mean? I'm taking it seriously. <laughs> Luxury watches are all about tradition and craftsmanship. When a brand can constantly push technological boundaries, things get really exciting. And one brand that does that really well is Tissot. So tell me, uh, I've heard a lot of buzz about your new uh, solar 
Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. This is what yeah. you're wearing right now. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The new solar. I mean, it's uh, you activate, and then the, you can get several accurate instrumental functions like uh, barometer, mm -hmm. altimeter, mm -hmm. chronograph functions, alarm, nice, countdown, and a compass. And and of course, you get the time. Huh? <laughs> I hope you get the time. And of course, this here, the, the, this sort of uh, gradient here, that, that's a solar panel. Solar panel, exactly. So how, how hard is it to integrate like an actual solar panel into a watch? I mean, you're putting a lot of technology into... Yeah, because we, we have a patent. I mean, don't forget Tissot, we belong to the Swatch Group, which is the biggest Swatch Group in the world. Huh? And so we patented this. But what is good, it, as you get solar energy, mm -hmm. you are not handicapped by recharging every day. Right, right. Like uh, some uh, electronic devices. So mm -hmm. that's uh, first when at Tissot, our main DNA is to make a watch that is a watch, mm -hmm. not a consumer electronic product. So what's new at Tissot this year? This is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. This is a new movement that we developed. This is the name is AHO5, very exciting name. We change the power reserve, we improve it from 42 hours to 60 hours power reserve. And you can see the details like a wheel on the back. This is the spirit of a car. Oh, it's really nice. You see carbon dial, anti-reflective coating, you see the details of the dial. And the indexes are like floating be between the dial and the mm. sapphire. It's very nice. Black coating, very... ceramic bezel, very strong. Yeah, it really, it really does is reminiscent of a. It reminds me of a vehicle almost because it's like the the way the paint is and stuff. It's almost like they got the sheen of a car. In the same spirit, this is for car. This one is more for biker. This is a MotoGP limited edition. You can see the disc brake, the spirit of the motor bike, the brake. Mm -hmm. This part remind remind you the forks. Okay. Tires, and of course the wheel. Very nice. We will deliver it with this nice helmet. Oh, that's it's incredible! Incred on that's really cool. Yeah. But yeah, if you're if you're a MotoGP fan, this is this is awesome. This is perfect. Yeah, I mean the the helmet's awesome. The the watch is, is beautiful. Yeah. So you showed us you showed us this entire line, but you you've been holding out. Yes. You've been yes. holding out. Yes. The best for last, right? Yes. I have a special uh, prototype today. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a smartwatch concept. This small, uh, like a tag. Mm -hmm. You put this one with your key or in your handbag if you have a lady or with your computer. If, for example, this is my bag. Okay. You're walking out of the house. I know the watch will uh, ring to, in, to inform you. You've left your... To inform you that, oh, I forget something. Yeah. Oh, my key. Wow, so that, that, that is a smart watch. It's very important for us that it's still a watch. Right. If you don't have this tool, it's working. So this could be the first, first really successful foray of a luxury brand into smartwatches with Tissot yes, and this prototype. Yeah, yeah. And you heard it here first on Life Inspired. Uh, Asia is becoming more and more important for the luxury market. What, what's Basel World done to sort of accommodate Asian markets? So we have many people coming from Asia, visiting Basel World, exhibiting at Basel World. Also many uh, people from the media covering Basel World. And uh, we organize a lot for them. We have uh, in our daily newspaper, we have a special section dedicated to, to people from Asia. And I think that our exhibitors also do a lot to, to accommodate people from Asia. It's really a very important market. They, they have special collections also for, for, for this market. So even the consumption in Europe is done by Asian people. So imagine. <laughs> Speaking of the Asian market, bring on an Asian giant. Synonymous with innovation and ingenuity, this Japanese brand is also known for creating the first ever quartz watch back in 1969. 
While there are a lot of great Swiss watchmakers, you don't have to be Swiss to make a great watch. Just take a look at some of the innovations being created by Japanese brand Seiko. Ishimaru-san, thank you so much because I'm wearing the Seiko Astron GPS Solar and it's a nice watch. How does it work? You press one single button and Astron does the rest. It connects to the GPS network and receives information of your location and adjusts automatically to your time zone wherever you are on the Earth at the touch of a single button. And it also has a perpetual camera. So, it's, it's, it's a really nice watch, but tell me what is new this year on the Seiko Astron GPS Solar. We have a new development in the Astron GPS Solar collection. We will launch a new caliber Astron GPS Solar Dual Time later this year. It is based on the Apex caliber we launched last year, which is smaller than original 7X and it's easier to use. With the new dual time calendar, you can read your home time on a simple 12 hour sub dial with a separate AM PM indicator. It also has a little gray day of the week display, which is reassuringly familiar to the lovers of luxury watches. Great. さあ、とても簡単です。so, you know, Seiko is always innovating. Tell me a little bit more about that innovative spirit. Okay. It was a special project of our current president, Mr. Shinji Hattori, to launch the Astron GPS watch. It has truly realized his great grandfather, Mr. Kintaro Hattori's motto one step ahead of the rest. Moreover, Astron is not just a technical achievement. With a new Astron, we want to add a new sense of vitality and energy to Seiko. Fast cars, fast planes, fast machines. Keeping with fast times, we move on to a brand associated with making toys for the boys. Established over a century ago, they are a front runner in mechanical timekeeping. This year, they have brand new innovative tricks up their sleeves, marking a definitive return to roots. As their saying goes, it's real watches for real people. Last year, Oris made waves with the Caliber 110. What's new for Oris in 2015? Let's find out. Tell me a little bit about Oris, talking about the tradition, uh, sort of the brand philosophy, what you guys are standing for. I think the key of Oris is, of course, we are purely mechanical watch. We only make mechanical since 1985. I think the other really brand value is independence, because we don't belong to a group, and that we also are a watch which is genuine, real watches for real people. I think these are the, the values of the brand, so to speak. So how, how do you adapt when you're purely mechanical, like what kind of things are you having to do to adapt to the changing marketplace? I think the key to it is really that you've got to be innovative. So it means we really push ourselves to come out with something special, like on this caliber 111 now, we have this uh, warm gear here, which you see here. Mm -hmm. 
and on the other side you have this uh, power reserve indication which shows that at the beginning there are small gaps and the gaps getting bigger and bigger. Okay. So this is a so-called non-linear power reserve indication. Mm -hmm. And this is unique and we have a patent on this. So we push ourselves. Now what's this piece over here that we've got? Over here, this is also a very nice cooperation we have together with the Audi team. That uh, I received the pictures from the from the presentation car of the Audi, and this gave us the inspiration to go with this with this piece. Mm -hmm. And here, we thought and we discussed. I made a proposal to Ulrich, and he said, "This is a good idea. Like a black devil, it has something angry, something powerful." Mm -hmm. And more or less, the idea has been born that we're going to use again the Artix GT case with a black coating. And we really would like to keep it black overall. And this, it's when you said angry and, and powerful, I mean, it's, that's exactly what this looks like. You know, it's like yes. completely black and with the red accents. It's like Angry is not a really a positive word, but you know, it's, it's, it's like it had to be a little bit aggressive. Yeah, maybe I aggressive is the word. It's like more like aggressive. More. Like, yeah, yeah. It's perfect. Well, actually, maybe I'm a bit aggressive because I like this. It's like, it's pretty <laughs> sharp. I like that. It's good. Basically, we want to know why, why this collaboration with, uh, with Oris, why the collaboration, why now? Yeah, I think um, it's, uh, it's very close to the racing world, you know, we, we all uh, like the mechanical thing and the very precise, uh, of course the timing, because when we are racing we are timing. When we see how a mechanics working on the, on the cars, it's, it's really precise, clean and perfect, and in the watches like uh, in Oris it's, all, it's the same, it's, it's really nice, really clean and perfect. Yeah, you both are just striving for excellence. Exactly. And so this is this, this is the model that you're wearing right now. Is it? Did you mind? It's an Audi Sport model. Uh, it's a new model with titanium mm -hmm. and uh, carbon. So I have to say it's really good for us because uh, it's really light. Mm -hmm. What we are looking for also in racing cars. So I, I really like that one. Yeah, it, yeah, because it's all like all the best stuff is just put into exactly. into the watch. Same as all the best stuff is put in into the race car. <laughs> My first bout upon return to the Mesenplatz has proved to be a winner. I've picked up some much needed art knowledge and met with prestigious timekeepers giving me an insight on the art of horology. Tune in for the next episode as I go one-on-one -on -one with more artisans of time, right here within the halls of Baselworld.